Sounded good. Yeah. But it didn't it didn't like hesitate when you when I took off. I mean it as soon as I gave it gas it had plenty of power, not like before when I was having all those issues. Yeah, right. But the charge pipe is on there, so What's up everybody? Welcome back to the CRT channel. Larry, after Larry Boyd with his blue GTX, <clears throat> after all the screw around that poor guy did with that freaking motor this year, finally he's got it running and he's on his way to US 41 for a radio tire race. So, I hope he does good. Um, I can't make it. Uh, he's got a crew guy there, so when he gets back, we'll, we'll find out how fast he did. But uh, he did send me an ET ticket. He, he did make it out a week before, and he texted me his ticket. And he finally got the car to run 150 and 8th. That thing's flying. And then he went to Martin, Michigan for some testing and tuning. I think there was some kind of a a no prep or something race out that way um, at Martin, Michigan, which I love that track. And he made two passes, I believe. And when he was coming back, someone pointed out to him uh, that his turbo wasn't spinning when he was coming down the return road. So something happened to it. It froze up. Uh, luckily, he's got a backup turbo. It's a different size, so he had to change the char the charge tube. He put it all on there, and he tweaked everything, and he just changed the transmission fluid, went over everything, and the car's good to go. So we'll see how good he runs. I'll, I'll let you know on that. Um, but today, today is the first Saturday after the No Name Nationals. <laughs> And if you guys didn't see my videos in No Name, go back and see it. It was a blast. So I got the exhaust pipe, the driver's side exhaust pipe off of Mr. Haney. And I've, I've had this for a while and I just never had the time to put it in. But I got a, um, a wideband sensor from Innovate motorsports and I just I was been so busy and I just haven't had time to put it in and I want to put it in I mean the Haney's already got two O2 sensors on there but because I'm running a Chrysler ignition system and not like um, a Diablo or a Holly you can't read it and if I had to do it all over again I would have not I would have not have picked the the Mopar um, I would have not have picked the Mopar ignition system. I got it because I was a Chrysler technician for a lot for a lot of years, and I, I always believed in Chrysler parts. They were, you know, Mopar parts were good parts, and and I really haven't had no issues with it. It's just limited in what you can do compared to the the Holly system, which basically does everything but tickle you while you're driving. Um, I'm definitely going to get that for the Cornet when I do that. But anyways, I got this O2 sensor that I'm going to put in. I'm going, I got the hole drilled already. So I drilled the hole in the pipe. They want it to be um, 24 inches from the collector. Uh, it has to be at least halfway above the pipe at level so like your nine o'clock to three o'clock position so the the sensor itself doesn't get any condensation into it and that that'll 
that'll short shorten the life out of it so to give you a bung I uh, I just put a little curve on it on the belt sander and test fitted it so it's so it fits there real nice I'm gonna I'm gonna weld the thing on put the exhaust back on the car or on the truck and then find a place to mount this gauge and read the instructions and how I got to put it in and this way um, I can actually have Mr. Haney tuned. I have a just get it running tune in there from last year and we never tweaked it we never we never made any changes to it it's just in there um, and last weekend at Sykeston Mr. Haney ran a, its best ET which was a 755 and when you calculate that or look on the cheat sheet and quarter mile times and I'm a quarter mile guy I I've raced my whole life quarter mile so I have to say well is 755 good what really how fast is that and I'm getting a little bit better at it because more and more people are racing eighth mile but converted over 755 is about 1180 1178 somewhere around there and that's some pretty good times for Mr. Haney um, it, the, the, the motor is somewhat stock it's got a set of headers on it it has um, just like a stage one like a four 450 lift cam which is really chicken shit it's, it's a very small cam um, but that's what's in there so for what little that I have the, the, or what little the motor is the trucks flying I mean I I become such a big believer in these gen 3 hemis man they they rip you know with very little to, to do to it so what I what my goal is before I park the truck before the snow flies and it's the second weekend of October so it's going to be coming up real quick I want to um see if I can't get the truck to, to run on horsepower um, maybe like a 50 or a 40 if I can get greedy I'll take a 30 but I'm shooting for 1150s and uh, that would only be a half a second away from running 10s so um, I put the, the Holly Ram back on it I took the stock manifold off this weekend put the Holly Ram on it I uh, I took a pass, uh, I, I did a, a quarter mile, or eighth mile pass with the draggy, and um, it's a half a second slower on the street. It was 801 and with the, with the Holly Ram, and it ran 803 with the stock intake manifold. Now th th this is with no burnout, no, no pimp juice, no puddles pouring, no, no doing a burnout, I just went up, and I slowly, no trans brake, I just slowly accelerated down and went an eighth mile. So a half a second is a lot. But it's about the same. So I'm thinking at the track, it might do better. Also, my tachometer is acting goofy right around 5200. Once that thing hits 5200, all it does is the tack just dances, dances, dances. It won't sweep up. The engine is sweeping up. But I don't know really where I'm shifting at. And with that Ram um, on there, that Holly Ram, I'm sure it's gonna be wanted to be buzzed a lot harder. That's where it's gonna make some more power on the top end. So I'm still granny shifting it. And I think once I get that tack fix, which I'm going to try to do here soon, we are going to, um, if weather provides and it doesn't snow early, actually take it to the track and see what the thing runs uh, I got an event coming up I'm going to Lucas or not Lucas but um Devin has been kind of talking me into going he's been bugging me about it they have a street brawl at um, our local racetrack at US 41 in Morocco and basically what it is it's an eighth mile run on an unprepped track from the finish line 
down the track an eighth mile. So it's completely unprepped. And from what Larry Boyd, Larry Boyd tells me, it's like driving, it's like racing in an alley. It's terrible on the big end. But I'm gonna try it, you know, see how it does. So, all right, I'm gonna get this, this bung welded in, get the exhaust back on, and then we'll let the truck down and see if we can't find a cool spot for this gauge. Which I only pick up a welder once or twice a year, and it shows. But I'm a great grinder. No, it's not the prettiest weld job. Matter of fact, if Jesse James saw this, he'd be bitching at me. <laughs> but I make sure there's no leaks, because if it does, the uh, the gauge ain't gonna read right. And I'm just gonna run this down along my shipper cable and find a place to put it inside the cab somewhere. We get a seven eighths. I'm not gonna tighten this because we gotta calibrate it. You need to do that without an exhaust. So I'm just gonna zip tie that. Can you see it up there? Probably not. All right, here's uh, the shift cable. I'm gonna zip tie the the, the wide band to that and have it go in the cab somewhere. If none of you's got a chance ever to see underneath Mr. Haney, there's that Crown Vic for an end. There's where we, where we reinforce the frame and it bolts through there. See the, the round stock we put in there on the inside to hold the bolt through and then the control arm bolts to the top and then we just made mount brackets right off the K member to hold the motor in. It was pretty easy. So my transmission 46 area with the lockup converter. The headers, the headers are for a a um, 70s Dodge Ram with the Gen 3 Hemi in it. And this side fit great for the frame for that one pipe to clear. That was it, other than that, they, they bolted in. Drive shaft, exhaust, the Ford nine inch, Ladder bars. And the coilovers. And the tubs. I did mini tubs. All right, I'm gonna find a place to put the gauge in a dash. Oh, that's a good looking piece. And cunningly disguised so it won't look like a racing car, you know? The cops would never give that a second glance. All right. We need to connect the white wire to that and with one female connector. Yeah, the white wire. So take the white wire and twisty, twisty it, and then put the female connector on it. Look up the directions at Innovate Motorsport 
Facebook.com knowledge is horsepower. And there should be a calibration process for... Oops. Can I... I got it. For the O2 sensor? Once the unit has been wired in a suitable location, has been found for both gauge and sensor. No. How many gigawatts does the flux capacitor need in order to make time travel possible? 80. With the size. Oh my god. 1.21. Why the fuck did I know that? How fast does the time machine have to go to reach? Oh, you didn't put it. I did not set it. I left it at zero. Why? Because okay. people would be like, hey, your speedometer is at 88 miles an hour. Dude, you get to hey. call them stupid like me. Hey. What? Oxygen sensor's out. It just tells you to turn it on for 30 seconds, and then there should be, it should come on with an E2 error code, okay. and then turn it off, and then turn it back on. And that's it. You heard him, Devin. You're in the fucking driver's seat. Oh, I cussed again. Thanks, Deb. You're so good at that. I know. It's so bad. All right. Well, there's the E2 code. Yep. I'm leave it on for 30, 30 seconds. seconds. That's it for calibration. You know what this gauge is called? Innovate. Marty? Innovate. You know what the gauge is called in, in slang? In street slang? No. I want to go fast gauge. Is it? Yep. All right, you got the timer for 30, 30 seconds? 10 seconds. Hey, were we supposed to start it so that it could read anything? No. Not when you calibrate it. Not when you calibrate it. Okay. Then how long do we keep it on here? I'm very confused. <laughs> it should have it should have not been like that. It says with the sense. My bad. Is it not plugged in? No, oh! It, it is plugged in. It is plugged in. It has to be unplugged and then do that and then. Wait a minute! It has to be unplugged. I thought the O2 sensor just had to be out of. The... Yeah. So. It has to be unplugged, and then hold it on for 30 seconds, and then it has to get plugged back in. Okay, so we got to do this all over again. Devin's going to check himself. Well, we would look at the instructions, but John lost them. <laughs> you would think it was a tool that uh, um, Lucas had. Okay. Going on? Yeah, turn on for 30 seconds. Well, see, now this time it's not flashing. What? Look it. Look it. See that gauge? It's standing still. Look at the camera. Mm hmm. Look at that. Yeah. What, what's the deal? DC current. And the camera picks it up because the camera has FPS frames per second. Okay. So as it's going, those are matching up with one of the frame gaps. Oh. Turn it off. Yeah, I know. I thought maybe Jim was inside the the gauge or yeah. Devin, tell him tell him who Jim is. Oh, it's uh the dead guy up there. Is is he the shop ghost? Uh, yeah. Exactly. All right. See if it works. Turn it on. I have a feeling you're supposed to plug it in while it was on. I am correct. Unplug it. Come on, guys. What? The, what the, are you just guessing? No. I read the damn directions. You read them wrong. Un unplug it. It's unplugged. Is the O2 in the pipe or out of the pipe? Out. It's out of the pipe. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because the truck's off. It shouldn't matter, no. Well, we got the three geniuses over here. We can't calibrate a simple O2 sensor. Hey, hey did anybody plug in? It underneath the dash? Underneath no. The dash? <laughs> look, <laughs> look at it. It's right there. <laughs> Shut the key off. God. What the hell, man?
God, I'm working with a bunch of amateurs here. Hey, at least I'm going to realize. It's right here, Devin. I see where it's at. Don't. Don't go around the column, though. Bring it all down. I will tuck it underneath the dash. Oh, my God. It's the it's three stooges. Hey, Mo! God, man. That is... You think you guys were drinking or something? I should be. Are you, what, what is the drug well, jug of choice in high school? Oh, God. Probably crack or something. Get that... out of here. No. All right, Lucas. We're plugged in. You unplugged? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's the difference if we're unplugged here or we're unplugged down there? Because this has to read down there. I have no idea, really. All right. So if we plugged it up here, would have made sense. Hey, Mo. And we're supposed to go to the street brawl and, and win some races with this? We can't even get an O2 sensor <laughs> working? <laughs> Yeah, that part's on you. You know, Larry said he's going to teach you how to pour puddles and get put me in the groove. Oh, uh, yeah? It's not hard to pour puddles. He said there's Look a... It in. He, he said there's a right way and a wrong way. Tell me. Well, then I might want to know the right way. Is it plugged in? No. What? What the fuck? Well, Give me a second. Ain't you supposed to shut the key off? No. Now it's plugged in. You plug it in while the key's on on? That's how he read the directions. Okay. Bullshit, no I did it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. said turn it off and then turn it back on again. I can't believe this has taken this long. I was fucking right. Alright, what's H-E-L? What does that stand for? Dumbass? Three, uh, the three dumbasses? Hell, it'll stand retarded. for H-E-L. I'll read it to you right now. Go ahead. Word for word, please. Word for word. Again, the display should sweep, but in cinnamon air, the, the display will display HTR. Mm -hmm. This indicates that the sensor is being heated up, heating up to operating temperature. Now it says Cal, 22.4. Two I think we got it. The display switch from HTR to Cal, indicating that your sensor is being calibrated. A few seconds later, your MTX Plus will be displaying AFR. It says 22.4 two now. 22.4, yes. The no. calibration procedure has been com complete and the system is now ready for use. All right, screw in that O2 sensor. Go get Lucas the 7 8 wrench. It's a 7 8 wrench. It's a 7 8 wrench so we can tighten it. Man, that took 10 minutes to calibrate a fucking O2 sensor. I did it again. I cussed. I know where they're at. I didn't mean to. Oh, <gasps> now he cussed. Oh, he said bad word. Wah, wah, wah. Hey man, you almost rolled on top of me. Don't do that. Finger thumb, finger thumb. I can't do it left handed. Hey. Wah, 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 wah. You know, Four speed. He said seven sixteenths, but he did not mean it. I said seven eighths. You said seven sixteenths. I did not. Swear to God. I said seven eighths. Seven well, who's the dumbass that gave him a seven sixteenths for an O2 sensor? I haven't seen it. I don't know. It's not a header bolt. Just put it on the ground. What's header bolt? Did you really get him a seven sixteenths? He did. I did not say that. You said that, dude. You have it on camera. Am I fucking dyslexic or what? Yes. What the hell? You got it on camera. Dang. Apparently nobody's allowed to be smart. Seven sixteenth or nine sixteenth. <laughs> Fucking dumbass. Hey, should we fire this up with him on any no. there? <laughs> Why not? It'll blow his fucking eardrums out. <laughs> hey, cover your ears. <laughs> hey! Fuck you! Watch this, watch this. Don't do shit! I'll be so pissed! <laughs> Literally, my ear is next to the exhaust. My whole face is actually on the exhaust right now. We wouldn't be friends. <laughs> you know, I'd tell your mom. But oh, that means he'd be grounded. That's not nice. He'd be grounded. Literally everything. 
You gotta turn the fans on. Start it now. I'm checking the light. Turn the fan on. On? No, it's right next to the beacon. It should read 14.7 if your yeah. shit's tuned right. At idle? At cold idle? Well, it's gonna be a little. We're actually cold idle. Keep your foot on the brake. Mm -hmm. Just turn the key. Lucas opening the door. Oh, it sounds like Maddie. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. For you or for all of us? He's not getting any of it because... It's Aurelio's too. I was under the truck. <laughs> Jeez. You're bringing it to me? Do you want some? Oh, I don't know. It's for everybody, I guess. <laughs> Say hi to YouTube. She was munching it on the way here. No, I was sitting out front eating. <laughs> <laughs> she had to make sure she got her fill before she came in. Typical kids, just, just plain cheese pizza. It's like a home. greasy if they put anything else like in Like Home it. Alone. This is going to fall. Put it on the tire. Thanks, Matt. Welcome. On the, in a, on the tube. I gotta, I gotta bust Scotty's balls. Hey, Scotty, remember when you drove down from Texas to Indiana to get your uh, transmission? Close that box so we can see the cover of it. Got it. And I took you out for dinner, and I took you to Aurelio's. Don't you know a joke when you hear one? <laughs>
out. The gauge is in and it's working. And so I'm going to uh, let my tuner know what the reading is. He's going to make a tune for me. And we're going to probably just put the draggy on and take it for a blast and see what she does and get ready for the street brawl. Um, streetcar brawl at the US 41 in two weeks. So thanks for guys for watching um, the CRT channel. And uh, Mopar to you. Have a good one. You know, when I said you could scrounge through that shit pile out back, I didn't mean you could build your whole fucking car with my stuff. <laughs>